Yet another beautiful spring day, yet another beautiful pond and plenty of algae. And for those of you who already know my YouTube channel, I do not have to tell you that I'm not going to collect a small water sample to be observed under the microscope. This one seems to be quite tame. It's not jumping away. The others all jumped away up. Now it's gone. Well, actually, it's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there are plenty of algae growing in the pond. I think it's a little bit over-fertilized. It's an artificial pond, um, so um, there has been a little waterfall there um, in the background. And uh, do we really have to tell you right now that I'm now taking out my little plastic containers uh, to collect some algae here? I think uh, that's uh, something that you can see quite well here anyway. Um, yeah, um, I'm using my favorite tweezers. I consider them to be the most useful tool of a microscopist. And of course, also a little bit of water I want to take along as well. Everything is closed, watertight, and everything is then taken back home uh, to my lab. Yeah, so that's basically my uh, field box. It's a little uh, box uh, used for tools and for nails and screws. I, I bought it in a hardware shop. Yeah, and uh, as you can see, uh, plenty of uh, filamentous algae um, and uh, interesting to observe uh, under the microscope, but uh, a little bit, as I mentioned, over fertilized maybe. Okay, uh, and uh, now I'm uh, back uh, in the lab. Uh, that is uh, basically me working again um, on my desk. Uh, it's not so easy to to get the filamentous algae out of the plastic container. They're quite long. And uh, so that's basically what I'm doing a little bit uh, with with a drop of water. Um, and then of course um, at the end uh, a small uh, cover glass on top. Um, and uh, I think not only the algae themselves are going to be interesting to look at but maybe there are also some ciliates uh, swimming around. Um, so that's basically something I'd like to now observe. As you can see, quite quite long those uh, those algae. Okay, so that I made I made two slides here. Okay, um, but they're basically the same sample, cover glass on top, and uh, then off we go and we put everything under the microscope. <clears throat> yeah, on the left side you actually see on the left side that's a, that's a spider <laughs> crawling up, and so I decided okay I'm gonna also prepare this. Here it's again. Um, I'm also going to prepare this uh, spider. So uh, here I'm using some Uperol mounting medium, uh, which I use uh, for arthropods generally. And yeah, here it is again, the, the black shadow, that's, uh, that's a small spider. And uh, basically I tried to put it in directly into the mounting medium. It didn't want to go there really. Um, so I tried a little trick. I simply dipped my tweezers uh, in the mounting medium to make it sticky. Uh, you can see that here right now. I'm dipping it in, so now it's sticky, and then that's easy. Makes it easy to pick up uh, the, the spider. Yeah, I, I know it's 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 uh, yeah, maybe not a very nice thing to do. Um, directly mounting a living specimen uh, in 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 mounting medium like this, but in any case, yeah, it's. Yeah, and then of course the cover glass has to be also placed on top. And and one of the problems with this mounting medium is, is it's it's already kind of a, very viscous. It's uh, not as fluid anymore, so I have to add some more solvent uh, to make it a little bit thinner. Um, and yeah, that's I think uh, I'm going to add some uh, some isopropyl alcohol, um, and uh, that works uh, quite quite well. Yeah, and so basically that's uh, what I'm doing right now. I'm mounting the spider, and I'm going to show you a picture later. Okay. So, but actually the real thing that I was interested in are, are the algae and so I'm, I'm putting now the slide with my algae under the microscope and uh, let's have uh, a look at it at the low magnification and you can see, yes, uh, there are plenty of algae um, and uh, on the lower uh, left side you can see a little scale bar and yes, sure, there are a few ciliates also uh, moving around uh, between uh, the algae. But I think uh, higher magnification is going to be a little bit more interesting here. Um, and uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm switching over now to a higher magnification. And uh, you can already see some of the structural details um, of the cells inside, the chloroplasts. These are eukaryotes, of course. Um, so they have a nucleus, they have cell organelles. 
and uh, they are therefore quite easily observable because they're relatively large. Yet at a higher magnification, you can see that the scale bar also increases in size. Um, however, I thought that the water sample was not really very interesting because we did not see so much, or I did not see so much biodiversity. Um, yeah, there were a couple of, of uh, ciliates uh, moving around, but also the the algae was actually mostly the same type. Um, so that's basically what I'm looking at right now. Um, and you can see the nice regular structure. And that's one of the good things about uh, um, using bright field microscopy that you can actually um, see the colors uh, quite well. Um, yet at a higher magnification. Um, and you can now see the chloroplast inside the individual cells. And I'm focusing now, using my fine focus knob, I'm now focusing back and forth uh, so that you can look at a little bit of different uh, uh, sections, different layers. And uh, yeah, that's basically something I'm doing again here. Um, and uh, then later on I tried to find uh, some of the ciliates uh, moving around and uh, they were a little bit difficult to find. Not difficult to find, but a bit difficult to trace because they were moving around quite quickly. Um, and so that's uh, basically, uh, it seems to be a rotifer. Um, and attached itself uh, to the surface uh, of uh, the uh, of the slide, yeah. Um, and so also, it's uh, filtering the water. And oh, here's another one going from top to bottom. So uh, yeah, I was kind of trying to to chase it around a little bit. Uh, not so easy because it was moving quite quickly. Um, yeah, it was running around <laughs> along the 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 algae, uh, attaching itself there. Yeah, yeah, and. It was actually not so easy to actually uh, look into um, into this uh, organism because uh, of its rapid movement, um, and going yet to higher magnification makes it even more difficult to actually uh, chase it around. So, but there were a few of them uh, moving around and uh, quite interesting to look at. Something I did not do in this uh, specimen I should have done maybe is, is to use uh, dark field microscopy. I think this would also have looked quite nice. I'm going to do this, I think, in, in the future. I'm going to look at, again, some of these algae using dark field. Yeah, and they're moving around happily looking for food. Sometimes I think they look like, a little, like little spaceships. And I don't know what this one is. This also seems to be some kind of ciliate. You can actually see the little hair moving on the surface, moving to a higher magnification still. Um, yeah, so you can see the, the fine hair moving uh, and uh, in comparison to the other one. So it's uh, this one here is, is relatively small compared to the others. Um, and this one seems to be diatoms. These uh, they seem to be diatoms. Uh, they um, have a very regular structure. Okay, I was playing around now with the, the, with the iris diaphragm a little bit. That's why the brightness changes. And yeah, very regular in, in structure. And they have a silicon uh, shell, which is uh, essentially the same material as glass. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, I did another time lapse. Uh, I like doing time lapses. And these are now um, oxygen bubbles that you see growing. The oxygen is produced by photosynthesis uh, by the algae. Yeah, and so you can actually see um, how they're actually uh, increasing in size. Um, this is actually it was actually quite a long, uh, quite a, quite a long uh, sequence, and I really uh, was uh, speeding up, speeding it up quite quite a bit. It's such a beautiful place here that uh, I decided to say goodbye from the pond, and not uh, sitting in front of my microscope. I hope uh, as, that you enjoyed uh, this video as always, and I wish you a nice day and uh, happy microscopy. Uh, but don't uh, turn off yet because I'm going to show you some uh, more pictures of this place here. And while watching the little waterfall and the nice pond, I do have to think back uh, at the spider that I mounted just a few minutes ago because uh, there's an interesting ethical question that I have. Because uh, some people who watch me directly kill these uh, animals uh, by making a slide are a little bit uh, ethically concerned and they don't think that this is okay. And yeah, it's an interesting point. Um, but uh, what happened is the following, I spilled my water sample over my slides here and what I did is I had to clean up, clean up this mess again so I took my tweezers, I put the algae back into the plastic container and the remaining water uh, with all of the thousand microorganisms I basically I wiped up using some tissue paper and this way I killed thousands of microorganisms. But the spider here, well, that is the one that we feel ethically concerned about and I wonder why is this? Why is it that we feel more concerned about uh, directly mounting a uh, sample in the 
um, under the microscope slide, but we're not really concerned so much about killing thousands of microorganisms by cleaning up the table. Interesting paradox, but now have a nice day.